It is at this time that we say a very pleasant good morning, a very pleasant Saturday morning. Welcome, one and all, to Garden America. John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox, I'm Brian Maine. Thank you for joining us, those on uh, BizTalk Radio listening to last week's show, those on Facebook Live. You are live, we are live, we are current. And Tiger's back with us after taking last week off, and we do appreciate that. Tiger, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good to be back. I don't think I've ever said welcome to the show, have I, to you? (laughs) (laughs) Ever. You're part of the show. We missed Tiger last week. Yeah, we did miss Tiger. Daniel sat in, our IT guy, and uh, did a good job. So we are back now with the the A team. This is the varsity. So we expect a a lot out of you today, John. (laughs) How about that? i got to get my closed captioning off. I took mine off uh, earlier. I also turned off the audio to my laptop. Really? How about that? How about all this planning ahead? All planning ahead. And, uh, you know, my mind's crystal clear. I'm taking a lot of these uh, brain supplements. And they work as long as you Which ones remember you to take them. Which one? There's uh, one's called cognitive health, hmm. and the other's called brain energy. Two different sources. But they don't work if you don't remember to take them. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> that's the first step. I used to take the Prevagen. Right. Yeah. Well, Prevagen, isn't and that an I ingredient? And I never forgot to take it, so it worked really well. But isn't Prevagen an ingredient? No. It's a brand name. It is a brand name? Yeah. Okay. It's from a uh, substance that's found in jellyfish, Brian. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's what the commercials are. Well, jellyfish live a long time. They think some jellyfish are immortal. Yes, exactly. Well, you read the same article I did. I did. Anyway, it it's is... It's been uh, cold up north. What's that? It's been cold up north. Yes, I was going to say, cold Saturday morning and uh, still some snow in a lot of places. Backing up your statement. Right, right. Um, You know, we have uh, uh, an auction on roses every year, and it's usually in the fall. And if people bid from out of state and they're in cold areas, I hold the roses over winter and then ship them to them in the spring. How about that, those listening? And there was a woman in, uh, let's see, she was in Minnesota, and she originally had wanted her roses shipped this week. Ooh, not and a she good sent idea. me a note, and she said, you know what? There's snow on the ground. Yeah. But she said they're supposed to go back to normal weather uh, next week. But but it's been kind of back and forth in Minnesota anyway. Lots of snow one week. Looks like spring has arrived. Right. And then, like you said, the next week, more snow. Yeah. My daughter bought uh, tomatoes about two or three weeks ago. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, boy. Yeah. And then last week sent pictures of them uh, fishing with snow all around them. Yeah, you know what? I just, uh, living in those kind of climates is a whole different way of gardening compared to here in San Diego. Yeah. You know what's interesting is that Dean uh, Brady, who we're going to be talking with this morning, they live in, he's in Colorado. Right. Right. But he's in Canyon City, Colorado, and they consider that the uh, banana belt of Colorado Colorado there. Really? And so I was just looking at his weather, and you would think Colorado is one of those places. They get snow random times. Right. It's 75 degrees with wow. a low of 52 degrees. It's warmer than here. Oh, he's going to be in a good mood. Yeah. And actually, like like John says, warmer than San Diego. Yeah. Now, what are we looking at, John, the next week or so? 60s and 70s. Well, that's nice. Yeah. No, it's perfect. It's apropos to this time of the year. Right, right. Well, I, I was telling you guys before the show that I just got in a shipment of roses from France, and they need this type of weather in order to acclimate and to put out new roots. Had they come the week before when it was 100 degrees, that would have just flat out right, killed them. Right. Hey, we should mention Happy Easter weekend. We're getting some of those comments on uh, Facebook. Um, Blessed Easter, Passover friends from Carla. Thank you, Carla, for that. Oh, yeah, they align, right? Yes. This is one of the rare times that the holidays align? No. I thought, no? No. Passover, I feel like there was something that was you mean aligning. Passover and Easter? You know, something was aligning, I feel like, and it was a big deal this holiday. That was also Jupiter was aligned with Mars. <laughs> <laughs> no, Passover is, um, uh, that's what Jesus was celebrating. Celebrating, right. Right, just prior to uh, the crucifixion, mm-hmm. the day before, right? So that's always Passover. Yeah. But... Well, I'll find it. I'll find it. Tiger's going to get to the bottom of this. He read something. He knows something. He wants to share it. (laughs) So, yes, uh, what else, John, is happening in the world of roses and uh, 
the back nest. Well, back we've got that. Estate. We've got that auction coming up, and I hope you and Tiger are going to be there May first. Otherwise, you're going to be the auctioneer. Well, if you you're not, it. Tiger will be. You can do it. <laughs> I, I'll be there. I'll have a PowerPoint. It's John's going to be in El Cajon if you're in the area. Ah. If you're not in the area and you're anywhere in the country and want to bid on the roses, you can go to ccrsauction.com. And that stands for California Coastal Rose Society. But ccrsauction.com, <clears throat> all the roses are listed. The current bid prices are there if you want to submit a bid. Uh, go ahead and do it. Just like that from anywhere in the world. Right. All right. right. I found my answer. So in a rare calendar alignment, Easter, Passover, and Ramadan. Converge. Oh, it's Ramadan. Ramadan, Ramadan converge. Yeah. So that's they're all aligning right now. Yeah. Ramadan sounds like a music festival. Good doesn't time. It? Doesn't it For sound the resurrection like that? Yeah. Plan. There's Coachella. There's Ramadan. Right. You yeah. know, there was Woodstock. Now, Ramadan's a whole month. Yeah. Right. Fasting, praying, all that. Fasting whole and praying. Month. I. Yeah, that's one thing I can't do very well. Fast. fast. <laughs> I, well, I mean, Ramadan I, is I just fast. no eating during the day. Right. Yeah, you well, can eat at night. And you can set your own fasting <laughs> but, time. That, I, I need to eat during the day. I don't think I can go 40 days. <laughs> oh, All won. right. Um, I put in the article, uh, in the art I'll put an article in the newsletter about how to take care of Easter lilies. Oh. I saw that. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> And I was thinking, we rarely talk about lilies in general. Lilies of the Nile? But, well, those aren't lilies. <laughs> day lilies. Those are agapanthus, and day lilies are hemerocallus. <laughs> so those are, I'm, I'm speaking lilium. <laughs> uh, the li lilium genera, uh, genus, I should say. But um, besides Easter lilies, there's a lot of lilies now that do really well outdoors. And I was going to mention that uh, traditional lilies for warm areas, uh, Asian lilies and Oriental lilies, do right. really well here. Yeah. There's some species that, that need cooler weather than we have in San Diego that we normally can't, can't uh, work with. But the others we can. And the larger flowers are usually the oriental lilies. Yep, and they have and more fragrance us usually, right? And they're usually really fragrant. Yeah. What, what's the common one that everyone really <laughs> liked a few years ago? Stargazer. Know. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, it's got like the pinkish yeah. and the whitish. Yeah, and yeah. extremely fragrant. Yeah. Um, but then they took uh, li uh, Easter lilies are called trumpet lilies, and you don't see those as much, but they cross the trumpet lilies, with oriental lilies and got orient pets so those lilies um sometimes can be like nine feet tall holy cow and loaded just loaded with flowers hmm. there was yeah. one i had Sunflower. called yeah called silk road that would probably put out about 25 blooms all at one time oh my goodness it's fantastic. But anyway, the reason I bring it up is because you can, now's a good time to order and plant lily bulbs yeah. uh, just about anywhere in the country. I was going to say, no matter where you are? Yeah. Wow. Hey, you, congratulations to Rick. He had a grandchild. Hey, congratulations. Sharing it with our Garden America community. Way to go, nice. Rick. Boy. I say, way to go, Rick. What <laughs> yeah, did you have to, to do go, with it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, congratulations. And Carla says, congratulations. Always good to have a new gardener added to the world. Yeah. Declan Neal. Yeah. Declan nice. is an Irish name, right? I think so, right? Yeah. I think Irish. so. I just found out my name's Irish all these years. Brian? Brian? With yeah. the Y? It's got Irish background to it. Yeah. Really? Silly because of the way it's spelt. O'Brien? Well, they, they were talking about what I was reading, the difference between Brian with an I, Brian uh -huh. with a Y. Right. And back and forth. And There's the, a chromosome. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the background of something about being Irish. I, do, I am Irish, Scotch, Irish, German, and a little bit, little bit of Native American. I'm a mutt. Cherokee, right? All, yes. all of us. Way to go, John. Not enough to get that monthly check, though. Oh. Hey, uh, John, and those, you know, you mentioned those lilies. And you know, one thing, and I think it's across the board a little bit, uh, growers, I don't know if they just didn't do it or maybe they're phasing out of it. There was less spring bulbs coming from color growers, meaning, you know, normally this time of year, we see a lot of those lilies come in just from, you know, not Easter lilies, but. Right. General growers put them in one gallons, cache pots, things like that. Nobody has any of that spring bulb stuff. So, like you're saying, I think in order to get it, you got to order it. 
and, and plant it yourself now. Easter lilies have always been one of the trickiest crops for greenhouse growers. Yeah. As, uh, if, time that out and it's got to be just perfect because if you miss that <laughs> yeah their, their bloom window is so right. small and there's such a specific window you want right and, and you know the the churches actually have a big problem because everybody usually gets them earlier than the real easter you mm. know like yeah you know like kids are on spring break two weeks before easter for you know city schools and stuff they don't right. align with it very well you we know gotta go to a break oh no are you done with your Easter lily story? Sure. Only because if you're not, we can hold over to the no, other we'll, side. No, we'll bring uh, Dean? Dean Brady from uh, you know Brady's Garden Center on. Dean when we come Brady, back. our guest is next. Welcome to the show. This is Garden America. Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. Welcome to the weekend. Back after these messages on Biz Talk Radio. We are back from the break. It is Garden America, in case there was any misunderstanding. I doubt that. Back with uh, John Brian Tiger for your Saturday morning or maybe Saturday afternoon. Welcome to the show. Be sure to visit our website at GardenAmerica.com, our YouTube page, Garden America Radio Show. Same as Facebook. Dean is standing by. First of all, though, John, with this week's quote of the week. Yeah, uh, with the state of the world today, uh, we've used this quote before, but I thought it was really appropriate. It's from Pope John Paul II. And he said, do not abandon yourselves to despair. We are the Easter people, and hallelujah is our song. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Good quote of the week. All righty. Tiger, let's uh, learn some things from Dean, shall we? Yeah, so this morning we have Dean Brady, the owner of Brady's Garden and Spa in Canyon City, Colorado, where he's been operating the nursery for 28 years, but many more years of experience with gardening. Welcome to the show, Dean. Good morning. Well, good morning, guys. Well, I'm glad to be on with you. And, yeah, I'm calling from Canyon City, Colorado. We're right in the center of Colorado, right at where the foothills of the Front Range there in Colorado. So we're a really unique climate here for gardening. We're pretty dry uh, here. We only get 13 inches of moisture a year. And being at 5,500 feet in elevation, it, it makes for some uh, unique gardening climate. Uh, we're right here on the Arkansas River. Uh, so we have some water. We have irrigation ditches still in our town here, which people utilize, which is great. Uh, but a great climate and very unique. We can go an hour and be at 12,000 feet on a mountain, or we can go an hour east and be about 4,000 feet in elevation there. So really unique. And uh, one of the things we have that's unique in our business, we have three locations on our own wholesale nursery that we've operated here for over 50 years in Canyon City. But we actually have elevation on our tags, you know, so a lot of people will put zones, of course, yeah. and water rights, which we do, or water needs. But we have a unique one of actually having an elevation. So we'll have 5,000 elevation up to 9,500 to 10,000 feet of elevation, which is, of course, zone one. Wow. That is that is a unique place to be where you have to put the elevation on a plant. Because like <laughs> you just said, I mean, you can go from... 12,000 to 4,000 all within a, a short drive of your shop that people need to know that if they're taking a plant home and driving right. 25 minutes away that then plant might not survive simply because it's another couple thousand feet higher, right, Dean? Yeah, and that, it, it, that's the uniqueness of this area. I mean, we have the mountains to the west. You look, you have all the mountains, Tremont Peak here and, and the peaks. And then if we look, look north in certain areas here, we can actually see Pikes Peak from where we are, you know, which is by uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado, of course. And uh, so we have a, it's a very unique area here. And if we go west far enough, you know, we have a 
our, lo- our other retail location and our greenhouse growing facilities in Salida, Colorado, which is 7,500 feet. And then from there, you can go up even farther, you know, in a short amount of time. Uh, there's a ski, uh, you know, we have a ski area there. And, of course, rafting in between Salida and Canyon is the Arkansas River, which is famous for its rafting and for its uh, fly fishing, gold water fly fishing and trout fishing. So a uh, really cool area, but really unique where we are in Canyon here. We're, we're also called the Banana Belt. And here in Canyon, if you look to our west, which is where our nursery is and right about where I live, that's where the Royal Gorge or the Arkansas comes right out of the Royal Gorge uh, area. If you've ever been to the Royal Gorge Bridge here, of course, that is the Arkansas that's flowing under that, and it's only eight miles west of us where the Arkansas River comes out. And that mountain area actually forms a curve or the banana curve where we have very protected weather here. Even though we're Colorado and we're 5,500 feet, we have very mild winters here. We, we get very little snow. Uh, we don't get very cold. Our average temperature, daily temperatures in the winter, are probably 45 to 50 degrees. And with our elevation, our sun here is amazingly concentrated, if you will. So even today, it's 36 degrees out right now, and we're headed to a high today of 64. But it feels warm out there. We, I can be out. I'm just in a vest, and I can be out and as long as I'm in the sun and there's no wind. It feels just fine, you know. So beautiful, beautiful day coming up. Uh, 70s and 80s are predicted for the rest of the week, though. So, yeah, I was going to say yet, we got down to 14 degrees just <laughs> uh, Wednesday night. So, so is springtime starting for you? Because yeah, you say the the weather projected is warmer than San Diego over the next few weeks or next week, I would say. Um, so, are you guys kind of starting spring right now? Or are you guys still waiting a little bit? No, it's starting now. Like yeah. trees and shrubs are, are frost-free for us. It's normally around Mother's Day. Um, now we've had it, you know, our last frost in April. Uh, and with our dry climate here, our, our humidity right now is probably around 12 to 20 percent, which is about what it it runs on average. So we're very dry in humidity. So therefore, our temperatures can swing uh, really rapidly from the from night temperatures to day. But our frost-free is right around. Mother's Day, and of course, we we grow our own trees and shrubs at our own wholesale nursery. So yeah, we do have trees and shrubs right now. Our crab apples, our our ornamental pears are in bloom right now. Uh, we'll be having a blossom festival here in Canyon City that first uh, the second weekend in May, which is normally back in the day Canyon City was full with our irrigation ditches was full of orchards and gardens that that mostly produced produce that went on the train to Cripple Creek, Colorado, which it was a big mining town, about 100,000 in uh, population at that time at the turn of the century. Uh, so Canyon's 150 years old and really unique, but normally our apples would be blooming that second weekend in May, which normally now is about a week probably before that. Our, our apples, our producing apples, will be in, in bloom probably in about another week anyway. Nice. All right. Well, you know, that climate sounds perfect for growing roses. Yeah, it does, right? Because well, the, the dry... yeah, it, no? you would think it, and it does well. The hybrid teas, the, uh-huh. of course, right now, the shrub roses of what we, we've we went to. Um, the dryness and the, the sun elevation, what we do, if you want to uh, really get a good, say, a Mr. Lincoln rose or a Double Delight rose to do well here, we would recommend doing it on an east side where it gets morning sun, Good water and, of course, good fertilizer, you know, and I was just stocking before we were talking uh, the Fertilome Rose Food. And that is, a, you know, one thing that we really, our soils here are pretty much mountainous and we're in the Rocky Mountains. So we have a whole lot of phosphate in our ground, but it's really not readily available to the plant. So that with our soils, you know, we, we always want them to compost the soil and, and add in a lot of stuff for drainage. But roses do well, but they do, they don't like the really hot sun we will get here in colorado and canyon here we'll get to 100 degrees during the summertime so it's uh, uh, it, it gets pretty warm here and that <laughs> sounds and like with John's our elevation yeah. that's pretty hard on our roses yeah you talk about being closer to the sun which you know how close can you get but in your elevation that does make a difference right dean yeah the elevation is a lot of stuff that sun intensity at our elevation can be can be pretty extreme like um 
here's a good one, for instance. Our number one selling shrub, which used to be, say, like Goldfinger uh, Potentella, now is Russian sage. Russian sage, Perovska, is our number one selling shrub. Hey, Dean, hold hey. on to that thought. we got to take a break and... Uh going to continue with what you're saying so hold that train of thought uh, those on facebook alive any questions comments uh, right there on our facebook page to dean or one of us those on biz talk radio this is last week's show you can always listen live though just go to our facebook page garden america radio show listen live on facebook every weekend we're going to take a break speaking of biz talk radio back after these messages do stay with us Okay, we have returned. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for supporting Garden America, Brian Maine, Tiger Palafox, John Bagnasco every week. Uh, Tiger, let's pick it up with Dean. Uh, didn't mean to have to interrupt Dean, but we're back, Tiger. Yeah, so we're talking with Dean Brady, the owner of Brady Garden Center and Spas in Canyon City, Colorado. Um, and before the break, you were mentioning how the uh, transition of uh, shrubs that you've seen over the years from um, – um, the elevation and the, you know, what does well, you, you saw that, uh, I forget the first plant, but you switch, you, you're kind of seeing more of the Russian sage now. Yeah, he said it right. used to be Potentella. Originally, okay. the Potentella was our number one seller, which, you know, in Colorado here, if you go up in higher elevation, is native. Okay. Uh, when I say higher elevation, we're talking around 7,500 to 8,000 feet. With water, they'll bloom all season, the yellow flowers, you know, it was it's very popular. And, of course, like, say, aspen trees. You know, aspens are all over Colorado. Uh, but that's one in lower elevations. The aspens do well, but they can sucker mightily. And they don't look as much like they do in the high elevation. They, they look different. Um, aspens in the mountains are white, you know, and kind of gnarly looking because of the extreme weather that they have. And down here where it's a little milder weather, they grow, and they be, being there in the poplar family, they actually look more like cottonwoods almost than than your regular traditional aspen. Yeah, that, you know that that's interesting. The the elevation changes. That's nothing. That, I mean, you know, I mean, we go from along the coast, obviously at you know zero, you know, to maybe an hour east of us, we could be at five thousand, maybe get up to six thousand feet, but. I don't think that that's a huge um, change. I mean, you know, like you're saying, from four thousand to twelve thousand, that, that makes that's a, a big a that makes a big difference, right? Um, and our zones, you know, here in Canyon, we're like I said, fifty five hundred uh, feet in elevation. We're a zone five. We're even, even I would say a high five. But if you were to go west of here very long at all, you can be in zone two or one in no time at all and we're talking a zone one usda you're talking 40 50 below uh for that and that would be on top of our mountains now here in colorado we have the line of rocky mountains and we have what's called 14ers now 14ers are mountains that are 14,000 feet plus and we have over 10 of those 14ers most of them you can actually climb and get to 14 so if you're in Colorado, I mean, in that area, you can, of course, come visit me or go hike a 14er and say you've done <laughs> it, or you can fish or you can hike or bike, or there's a whole lot of stuff to do here. And, of course, gardening uh, in this area, too. Now, Canyon being a very agricultural, uh, historically agricultural place here with our land, our, we have seven irrigation ditches in our town, which are pretty rare and getting rarer all the time, which are fed by the Arkansas River. You know, there's still an opportunity here for vineyards and orchards and and the gardening, and that's what we're seeing a resurgence to uh, or a return to with especially COVID. You know, like everybody, they've seen a big increase in sales and gardening when people were home and, and worried maybe about their food a little bit. Uh, so we've seen a big increase of gardening there, and we're seeing that uh, maintain. Uh, Canyon City, we're a city of about 17,000. But uh, along the Front Range, we're starting to get, if you will, I guess, some spillover from Colorado Springs, even the Denver area. So Canyon is growing fairly quickly. Uh, it's always been a small town, but I'm hoping we can kind of uh, retain a lot of our agricultural past and actually keep these areas open. You know, here at our garden center, our 20-acre nursery, 
and even my four-acre personal property that I try to keep open for bees, and I'm a beekeeper, and I do hay, and I do orchards and gardening. So <laughs> not only do I do it here at work all day, but uh, I also do it at home. So uh, hey. we've been in it. Our family has been in it over 60 years, and for me, my 51 years have been all in gardening and right here in Canyon City. Hey, Dean, with the with the location that you're working in, it seems like it does get chilly in the winter, and like I said, there's some elevation there. Do you guys have, but it's still warm, a problem with a lot of bugs in the garden, or does the weather kind of control that? Yeah, what's your biggest pest, Dean? Well, our biggest pest here would be mostly boars you know so we of course do a lot and recommend a lot the fertile oak tree and shrub drench uh that's a great product what i call insurance um it's easy it's inexpensive and it's going to protect a lot of these older spruce and pine and pinion that we have here even some a lot of our fruit trees you know like the apples and pears you can apply it to them also and still be edible for the fruit so That's one we sell a lot of, and like I said, it's just a great insurance factor, and it's safer. And as long as the drench is applied to the roots, um, even on flowering trees, it does not get into the flower. So then you're not going to be harming any bees or anything also. Okay, so boars, that's that's a tough one. Right. You, I mean, you know, it sounds to me like if you were to move there, you'd have you'd have to learn how to garden a whole different way. There's so much to be concerned with. Now, yeah. right, Dean, it's like it's different than everything you're talking about is is not the norm for where most people garden or come from. Yeah, we had a well, a gentleman just yesterday I was helping. He was raised in Canada and uh, till his adulthood, and then he was in Michigan, and then he went from Michigan, uh, did his career, and then retired here to well, actually, it's called Penrose. Penrose is east of us, so it's more in the plains and even a little bit more exposed and drier. Um, And he's like, it's a beautiful area and it's really affordable. But he's like, it is really hard to garden here versus, you know, of course, Canada, the lushness (laughs) of Canada and the moisture, you know, here with the moisture, the elevation. (laughs) It's 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 a different way to garden. It is truly, you know, so organics in the soil, moisture retention um, and moisture control. Like a lot of times, you know, of course, like fertile homes. Uh, root stimulator with the surfactant and the fertilizer is a great way to start trees out. Trees and shrubs here need care, especially when they're first planted. And it's really important that you give them the correct care in order for them to get a good set and to actually thrive. And of course, uh, fertile homes, tree and shrub food uh, once a year, twice a year here in spring and fall really work well. But our watering here, you know, where we don't get a lot of moisture and we are hot and we are dry, Drip systems here um, are really important. Of course, sprinkler systems for your lawn, which uh, a lot of people that move here, they never maybe even seen a drip system or even heard about it. Uh, But drip systems here are, uh, of course, very, very good, very efficient way to water. Uh, And the type of plant, of course, with not only zones and hardiness, but also the correct area. So very, very vital um, in there. And, of course, lawns here, if you will, are are fairly much shrinking because of, of control and maintenance issues and, of course, water. But, you know, and I always say lawns are great, but, you know, you don't need a huge lawn here. Yeah. Um, you know, the uh, mine at home, my, my lawn is very, very nice looking. Of course, I use our Fertile Home 5-step program, but it's only 2,500 square feet. But I do have a sprinkler system. I do monitor it um, and you know, make sure my lawn looks amazing. And of course, like weed-free zone. What a great product that is for our time here. We're cool right now, and especially today. Now, today's temperature being in the 60s, you could still take the weed fertilomes weed-free zone and actually kill those weeds uh, that normally other 2,4-D-based products will not because it's not warm enough. So the weed-free zone works very fast and at cooler temperatures. For us up in the mountains here, it's a really important product and one that really works very well. I'm sure you guys have really good water there, too, because, I mean, you're getting it, you said, from the Arkansas River? Right. Mostly. Our city water here and our irrigation yeah. water yeah. both come from the Arkansas. So, it's, yes, we do have, you know, very good water. You know, it's pretty much neutral or, pH. Yeah. It doesn't have a lot of minerals in it. It tastes really good. Uh, now, vice versa in Canyon here and the Arkansas River, of course, where Canyon would be on our north side of Canyon, the north side of the Arkansas, that alluvial soil kind of came down from a different mountain range uh, in the past, so it's very clay, 
has a lot of clay and a lot of alkali in it, and there is some water sources up there that they have, either groundwater and subsurface water, and it's really high in pH and not really all that good. So in those areas, a lot of iron and sulfur, um, like fertile home soil acidifier with iron, is a very good product for them to use. And that's great for all plants, but especially for that north side, which is clay soil high in alkali, they have to use that. And on the south side, where, where my home is and our nursery is, and then where my garden center also is, on the south side, it actually has fairly decent soil. Um, once you get up in the mountains a little bit more, it turns into a decomposed granite, uh, but, our soil, but it's not really high in pH. But whereas the north side, I mean, we're talking 10, 15-minute drive, you can easily change soil um, a, a ton, uh, a lot, just from going across the river. So really unique areas here. I, I ask people, you know, nowadays, you know, you don't want to get too personal, like what's your address or anything, <laughs> but I always ask them what part of town do you live in or where do you live? If they're talking about, say, a maple, like an autumn blaze maple here, gorgeous uh, tree, grows fast here, does well. But in- hey, Dean, we got to take another break. Sorry to cut you off, but uh, we got to take another break. When we get back, we'll continue chatting with Dean Brady from Brady Garden Center and Spa. You betcha. After these messages on Biz Talk Radio. Okay, we are back from the break. Uh, those on Biz Talk Radio, this is the final segment of hour number one. We've got news coming up top of the hour for you. And we are back at six minutes after those on Facebook Live. It's the same thing, continuing down the same Facebook Live road as uh, we also continue with our conversation, uh, Tiger, with Dean. Yeah, before the break, we were chatting with Dean Brady with Brady Garden Center and Spa in Kansas City, Colorado. And you, you were mentioning, Dean, about how important it is for people to kind of know where they live, what soil that they have. And um, before the break, you were talking with one of your customers about, I believe it was a maple. Is that right? Yeah, not a uh, maple here, like in most places, like acidic soil and iron so that they don't get chlorosis. Uh, so it's really important for customers here. You know, really everything benefits from that. You know, and once a year, if not twice a year, I always recommend that they do like uh, the soil acidifier plus iron or the Iron Plus product, which is a lot of iron and a lot of sulfur. So for most people, it's going to just green them up here. But for our high alkaline soils here, it's essential. Without it, it's not if, it's when they get chlorosis. And then this goes back to an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. You know, once the maples especially get the chlorosis or lack of iron, they are really hard here to actually get fixed so a lot of times to get them better we actually have to do like an injection of uh pure iron into oh. the tree and then that's still not helping the root problem which is you know in the ground and stuff so doing that around a little bit goes a long way and that's really important yeah that definitely definitely is good words to live by dean and you know dean when when um i first learned of your garden center i was like oh man this guy's really on to something, you know, if he has a, a, a spa in his garden center, I could just imagine, you know, people in robes cruising around in a very, uh, you know, serene. You tried to make reservations I did. at the spa, right? Exactly. Yeah. I was trying to and see what treatments they spas, have. I probably should clarify that that is actually it's hot tubs that we sell. We have a yeah. patio store. No, and, no, uh, that's a good thing. Tubs. That's a good thing to do, too. Do you ever just kind of like... You, it's a slow day, and you're like, oh, I'm just going to jump in my display unit right here yeah. and take a little Well, yeah, break. we have, like, swim spas. You know, we, I, you know, several times uh, I sold my swim spa that we had in the floor, but we have, we have it hooked <laughs> up and running, and I could go over there and get in my hot tub side and, or get yeah. in the swim spa side and show people. But, yeah, it's a, you know, being it's winter here, and we do Christmas stuff here, of course, during the, that, but that is a good way to try to keep uh you know, our, our, we're open year round, so that's uh-huh. a good thing to actually keep a little bit of money, keep there you employees. Go. Good um, diversification. Busy, selling hot tubs. <laughs> yeah. And, and Dean, you also do your own radio program there locally, right? Yeah. On our local AM station here, KRLN 1400, I do the Garden Guy show uh, every Thursday morning from 9 to 10. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining us this weekend, Dean. Lots of great information, getting excited, getting people excited about springtime, um, knowing their soil, knowing what products to use, how to use them. 
you know, great stuff. Um, Dean, where could we send people to get maybe more information about your garden center or about your program? Yeah, no, the program is just here local, but you go to Brady'sGardenCenter.com or our Facebook page, Brady's Garden Center. Uh, you can uh, learn a lot of stuff there. And I appreciate having you guys having me on the show. And like I said, happy spring and happy Easter to everybody out there. Yeah, thank you very thank much. You, and I'll Dean. post those links. Have a great rest of the weekend and happy Easter. You too. Mm, bye-bye. Take care. Well, yeah, of course, he's on the radio. Great yeah. talker, right? Yeah. Ask yeah. him the first question, and boy, he was on his way. Yeah. We learned a lot about Canyon City there. Gosh, really, right? right? Man, the who knew? Belt. Who, thought, who would ever think that Colorado had a banana belt? And, and, and then, like, just to think that, you know, on one hand, he's away from, you know, he mentioned the lowest elevation of 4,000, and on the other end, you could be up to twelve. Like for us, I mean, we have mountains around here, but not twelve thousand. Well, that's drastic change. You know, mountains. Well, he's talking about the fourteeners, <laughs> and after raising three kids, that was the toughest for me. Was the fourteeners? <laughs> the fourteeners. <laughs> yeah. When they know everything, right, yeah. John? Uh. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. What a nice little. Sounds like a nice little community. And then, and then it's it's interesting that he mentioned crab apple as one of the uh, the, the the fruit from the area because we don't we don't do crab apple here. Well, he's talking about flowering crabs, which are the, one of the top ornamental trees in cold climates. Right. You know. Right. You know. Yeah. No, we, we don't. We don't. We don't, we grow don't them here, at them all. here because right. yeah, they don't do well. But it's just interesting when you a very common plant to someone in one area, and it right. doesn't exist where you live. Well, you know, my son Joe sent me <clears throat> pictures from Indianapolis last week, where he lives, and uh, he said. What a surprise. And he had a picture of a weeping cherry Ooh. that was in full bloom at his house. And he said he had assumed it was some type of willow uh-huh. because out here you don't see weeping cherries. Right. But that's one of the top landscape plants. They're not fruiting. Uh, they're just ornamental, but they really, really are pretty oh. when they're blooming. Surprise, yeah. surprise. Yeah. What they call? What do they call the snow fountain? Is a real common one. I think it's got a white blossom. I don't know. It it, it sounds like it could be, yeah. but if I was going to have a weeping cherry, I would want double pink or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Why would you want white? But it's not. You said non-fruiting. Non-fruiting, yeah. right? Yeah, you can grow fruiting cherries also, but yeah, in Indianapolis. The, yeah, because it's cold. Yeah, but yeah. the Weather. weeping one, the main weeping one, is uh, usually a a pink. Yeah. And they're pretty. They, the one he sent me a picture of was huge. Usually, they're you see them as smaller trees. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a huge one. What, what, what's a huge one? Eight feet, ten feet? Oh no, this one looked to me like it might be as much as fifteen feet. Wow, fifteen. That feet. is that's a that's a big one because, yeah, I mean, I've seen them here, but like I say, maybe eight feet is kind of a big, a big specimen for me. Hey, I want to mention, we talked about this briefly last week, Tiger. The citrus tree that you gave me yeah. is a um, lot of flower right now, flowering, losing a ton of leaves. Kumquat, right? No, no it's a, a mandarin. It's a mandarin. It's a mandarin. Um, a little more leaf drop than I thought that I was used to seeing the last couple of years. Oh, yeah? But it is flowering, a lot of white flowers. Yeah. That's why it's dropping its that's, leaves. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, that's, because that's why you have it in the same pot for the last two years, right? Yes, yes. So the roots have filled it up. There's not enough nutrients. So I got to transplant it. And so the plant is saying, you know, I need to fruit and flower, but there's nothing in here for me to eat. So I'll just get rid of the leaves. So it's throwing a hissy yeah. fit. Pretty Tatiana, much. Yeah. Pretty much. Tatiana gave us a whole spectrum of fertilizers. Oh, I have them. And but, there but, were some in there I think that would be good for Right. I can't I can't remember the one off the top right. of my head. But but you can but, it's on the label. Yeah. So so I should leave I could leave it in the pot or you can leave it in the pot, but you gotta give it a lot give of fertilizer. Is it, is it okay. still in the five gallon pot? Or is it bigger? It's, it's bigger. Okay. Yeah. It's bigger. Yeah, no, you can leave not. it yeah. in the pot. Then. Yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah. yeah, so it needs to be fed. It's when it's saying, I'm hungry, feed me. Fertilize me, feed me. Yeah. Well, what you should do is every two weeks uh, mix up some of that fertilizer in a watering can and just pour yeah. it over the leaves and the stems. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do when I get home. Also, hey, so put some Osmocote in the bottom of the pot. You're a big Osmocote guy. It's easy. Oh, I am, yeah. It's easy. I hey, just bought 150 pounds of it. we got to yeah. take a break for news, top of the hour, BizTalk Radio. Facebook Live, we're back even quicker. Do stay with us on this Saturday. This is Garden America.
It is six minutes after the hour. If you're listening to us on BizTalk Radio and we say good afternoon, the rest of us, eh, time doesn't matter. We keep on cruising along here. Welcome to Garden America. Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. Every week we do this to the best of our knowledge, the best of our know-how. And I want to thank Dean Brady uh, for being our guest, our number one, Tiger. Yeah, it's always interesting to hear different perspectives of gardening or you know locations and what they do and what works and maybe what doesn't work. I mean... Dean was very knowledgeable in terms of soil conditions, you know, knowing how to fertilize specifically, you know, for specific soils or, um, you know, amend specific soils. And, you know, really comes down to what he mentioned as far as the prevention, you know, is way more important than, you know, the results in the beginning because you want to establish that good right, root right. system and for whatever you're growing. It's like the Bruce Asakawa of Colorado. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, where do you live? <laughs> are you down by the river there next to the basin? Right. Uh, yeah, are you watching me right now? <laughs> how do you know that? I love how he did prelude it with, I don't necessarily ask him their address. Anymore. He <laughs> right. said anymore. anymore. <laughs> hey, did you read what Ed uh, wrote to us on Facebook? Yeah, he's listening while he's editing a video for Tomorrow's Harvest. And oh, yeah. Facebook page, nice. and he mentioned a few cold hardy plums in in the video that he's going to be doing. Yep, he oh, says nice. Burbank, Toka, and Superior are great plums for cold areas. And then Tanya earlier said she overslept in wet San Jose. Just got back from a road trip to Tucson. Enjoyed listening to last week's recorded show on our drive home. Ooh, nice. wet on San our Jose. Drive home. Wet. What, what's that? Wet San, Wet San Jose. Jose. Did it, it rain up there? Apparently. Wow. Hmm. Nice. Yeah. Well, Tanya, how, do, how <laughs> yeah. were you listening to us in your car on the way home recorded? I'm curious as to what means. Well, you listen to your phone. Yeah. Why can't the you YouTube just. YouTube or the Facebook? Yeah. Well, I'm just curious how that whole, how yeah. she hooked it up and how yeah, it worked. That's it. It's technology, there's many ways, Brian. There's many ways, John, as you know how to listen to this show. Yeah. Which <laughs> medium was she on? Yeah. I, lo I love how John is. Lecturing you on technology, on technology on listening yeah. to the show when he could barely get us live half the morning. Oh, I just do this. You know, my <laughs> wife has started a new thing uh, to me when she's trying to concentrate or do something. <laughs> and I'm talking to her. I get, you ask too many questions. <laughs> <laughs> Tanya's answer is YouTube. Oh, there you go. So there you go, f folks. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. become a subscriber to our YouTube page. Like, subscribe, and share. That's always been your All mantra, right. John. Now, on subscribe, do you have to, you don't pay for that? No, or you just do click. You? you just click a button. You're a subscriber yeah. to the to the station. Oh, to the, to the show. Because usually no I hear the word subscribe, and I think money's involved. Simple click, and then you can not, you can ring the bell, which will notify you via email that hey, a new video has been uploaded. Really? Oh yeah, is this that is big time. What happens when your phone goes off during that's the it. show? That's it. Those are subscribers. John. Every time <laughs> my phone goes off, a new subscriber. Yeah, that's a Garden uh, America Radio Show on YouTube, and of course we've talked about our website, new and improved, just like laundry detergent, GardenAmerica.com. Yeah. So Tanya said that she had rain today. Wow, that's that's nice. Up it's in nice. San Jose, we we had a little bit of rain last. Was it last week? The week before? It kind of spit it, it a was, little but bit, but it's perfect for this time of year. Yeah, we need yes. that. So what we really need is the cool weather that we've yeah. been having after exactly. that hundred. Do you know, I was surprised uh, to, to see the heat damage from the plants after only two days. I know. Even though I tried to water and, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. going back now and the weather's cooled off and everything's doing well again. But a lot of plants have been damaged. Because it's not a gradual build up to the heat. It's immediate. Right. Like a blowtorch. It's a blowtorch. Yeah. Blowtorch weather. Um Damage reminded me of this thought when before we were having Dean on the program, we were talking about the newsletter. And in the newsletter, John had an article about the Easter Bunny. Yes. And I off was, the ears. I was expecting you to comment on how you had some, I think you had mentioned control, a control, an article on control. And I thought, on, is he going to say on how to control the Easter Bunny from getting into your yard getting or something? Getting into your yard. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> What eating did you eating say, all your plants. Eighty percent of the people bite off the ears first. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, yeah they're right there. They're sticking up. <laughs> they're, of course, they're just asking for it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Right now, do you like the hollow or the solid? Chip? Oh no, the solid's the best. Absolutely. But you can't get them all the time. No. And what was the deal with chocolate this year? Where it was, uh, there was uh, recall. Oh really? Yeah, recall on some some type of European chocolate. 
Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't hear about what that. What was wrong with it? Uh-oh. Better it's look at my chart. Deadly poison. People yeah. were dying right and Dropping left. Dropping like flies right and left? Yeah. No, hey, I, there was... On? Go ahead. I was just going to say there was there was something that contaminated it, and they recalled it. Yeah. I was just going to say, what's on your mind, Facebook livers? That's what we're going to start calling them, Facebook livers. Yeah. Whatever's on your mind, uh, post it right there on our Facebook page. Questions, comments, we, we understood this morning and have learned that... Uh, it's very wet in some areas of yeah. Northern California. Linda says it's raining in Redding, so wow. it Maybe. must be all over Northern California there. Now, is it heading this way? I don't think so. I haven't heard anything. Light rain this morning in Lompoc. Don't think it rained south of Santa Barbara County. You know, Veronica in Spring Valley explained what happened to her bunny ears. Easter chipmunk? Yeah, the Easter chipmunk gets them every year. weather planned ahead for us 70s all week long yeah i it's perfect and i'm so so excited for the uh things that we're starting to do yesterday around our house we had the weed or weed eater going oh, all yeah. day the weed eater the weed eater planted six fruit trees Ooh. two years ago wow. my son joe who now lives in indianapolis said we have to go buy fruit trees today <laughs> and i said well we don't even know we're going to plant them we have to go get them now <laughs> all right let's go get them so two years later they're, they're finally they're just now planting them. finally went in the ground yeah. you put oh. gopher baskets on them no 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 Ooh, you're there's just rolling the dice you live there. dangerous yeah man. you do no. i do have some gopher baskets that i'm going to use when i start so far, I only have one plant in a gopher basket, but I do have a, a bunch more that I'm going to try and see how they work. Yeah. But I've got some trees I'm going to plant. I'm thinking of putting uh, plumeria in the ground next week. Did I Really? Yeah. Did I give you the gopher basket that's kind of more of a mesh? Yeah, remember we talked about yeah. that on the radio, and I was wondering how the smaller... larger plant roots would right. get through that. The one I have right now is the old one that was kind of like a chicken root, wire. Root guard. Root That's guard, That's the one right. that you... And those ones are good, and I, I, I like that. They're just a lot more expensive. Well, and... And they're they, not as flexible. I was going to say, they they are more difficult to plant in, I feel. The root guard ones, um, it's, called, it's from a digger's brand, but... I agree that I feel like they would allow for bigger roots and right. better growth. Where the other one is, I'm trying to think of if there's a brand here. Um, I was wondering if, if, for instance, if you put a tree in there, would the tree roots, as they grow through, spread that? So yeah. So that the plant would be okay? I don't know. Yeah, I agree that that mesh one just seems like it might you know, restrict some growth. When it comes to trees, well, I have a couple bulbs I want to plant, so I think those are perfect. Is the mesh really tightly woven? Yeah, very. Yeah, that see that would. Yeah. yeah, it's almost like chain mail. But it's so much nicer to work with in yeah. terms of planting. But yeah, I'd maybe use it more for smaller perennials or plants, and then the diggers go for cages used for more of your trees and uh, roses and shrubs. Well, the two bulbs I want to plant are Brunswickia. Mm. And Brunswickia, I don't know how long it takes them to bloom, but I've had these for like seven or eight years. And so I don't want to put them in the ground and have a go for it. <laughs> they haven't bloomed yet, but I'm looking forward to it. The blooms remind me of something you would like, Tiger. Yeah. Because have you seen Brunswickia before? Sounds familiar. I can't. It has it a bloom that looks like a maybe a giant um, allium. Ooh, uh, about a foot across. Like. Yeah, you're a big allium guy. Yeah, mine didn't make it. They what started, happened? They started and they never. I thought you said they were budded. They were, and now they're not. You're admitting <laughs> defeat. That's that's great. You want to talk the about hot weather? Get them. I think that's what it was because uh-huh. it was right after that. And I and you know, like you said, they were watered. It wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't moisture. I think it was the hot weather. You know, we should have a, a segment called the garden couch yeah people can We're, call in like they're in a psychiatrist you know and tell us about the problem I've tried it so many times it's not your this fault doesn't work it's not your fault it was <laughs> hot, hot weather plants died hey we are just in time for yet another break on the other side when we come back more of these these types of conversations more of your questions more of your comments 
as we uh, take care of business here on your Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon on Garden America. Back from the break on Biz Talk Radio. Welcome to Facebook Live. Those tuning in, however you're listening. Tanya, of course, giving us an example of uh, listening to us. Uh, YouTube, many ways to listen to us here. Facebook, can't get away from us. Can't hide. <laughs> we will find we you. We will find you. Yeah. And when Carla says there's a light drizzle on Huntington Beach. Yep, 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 yep. Hmm. This is perfect spring weather. It is. A nice. little bit of coolness, a little bit of cloudiness, get a little drizzle, like you say, John. As long as it stays cool, it's nice. Right. Yeah. I'm trying to think. This is mid April here. So, would you say it's okay to start putting uh, seeds in the ground of squash and watermelon, other melons? Yes. Because of I the, think because so. of the temperatures right now? Yeah. Well, the soils are starting to warm up mm-hmm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. And um, if you go out and test them like the European farmers you used to do, you go down do, a ways where you pull down your pants and sit on the ground. <laughs> and I thought see they w- did that for, for fun. <laughs> There's actually a method to their madness? Yeah. yeah, that's how they felt the temperature of the soil. Is it ready to plant? Because your buns are very sensitive to temperature. <laughs> anyone, anyone knows well, that. Yeah, yeah. Way more sensitive than your hands right, or exactly, your feet. Exactly. <laughs> that's why, so wait a minute. So what do mothers do uh, with their kids to test for fever with the back of your hand? Oh, and the, the wrist for the bath water? Right, right. They would take their fingers and tap the water with their wrist to make sure it was okay for or, the baby. Or the milk on the back of your hand when you he- heated it up. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm sure somebody listening to us on that was Facebook, on your wrist, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Let us know. You squirt the yeah. milk onto on your, your wrist. On your wrist. Yeah, because of the, the sensitivity of the area. Right. Which gets back to your your bun method, John, that you were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> your your buns and your wrist are the most sensitive areas. Can you see that? Put your guy. What are you doing over there? Hey, get up. What are you doing? Put your, put your pants on. Come on. Get out of my garden. <laughs> hey, I, I'm planting squash. <laughs> well, you're right. sitting on the plant. It yeah. is squashed. <laughs> you're doing something illegal in most states. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not Used to uh, be. All right. So when I get home, not maybe today or tomorrow, we're going to clean up the leaves. We're going to feed that boy. We're going to give him some fertilizer. I'd be careful and give too. him some attention. I'd be careful too with that citrus in that pot because, you know, your patio is a little bit shadier. That well, there's it a lot of sun right now. Overwatering too. There's a lot you know. of sun right now. No, I don't think it'd be overwatering. No. Two years in that pot. Yeah, the roots have got to be full. How? I I would say it's virtually impossible to overwater. I mean, it's healthy. It's healthy looking, but it does need to be fed. You guys I have right. citrus in five gallon cans right now that I I bought them from Four Winds Growers, uh-huh. and so they come in those little, little sleeves. Right. So I put them in five gallon cans, and this is going on the third year, and hopefully I'll get them in the ground sometime soon. But I'm watering those almost daily. Wow. And they're not overwatered. You talked about, though, being consistent with the watering practices. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's hard to be more consistent than every day. Yeah. Right. You, could do it, you could do it twice a day. Too much. No, uh, yeah. once a day, every day. Yeah, twice uh, a day might be too much. Well, you know, you mentioned the consistency, and a lot of plants do respond to the inconsistency with water, too. Now, you know, they say citrus are, are in the ground are deep infrequent water yeah you know they that's what they like in the ground like every 10 days to two weeks right but, but the, then the pot because the drainage you know but then a gardenia you know you need to be consistent whether it's not a lot or a lot they yeah, like it they mind. like it to be the same right all the time yeah, you know a ficus sense. tree indoor ficus tree needs to be the exact time in the afternoon on the exact day otherwise it'll freak itself out and or drop i'm just gonna all drop leaves. my leaves yeah <laughs> Exactly. I'm telling you, I just won't, I can't put up with well, it. Well, gardenias like are one of those plants that'll drop their buds for spite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> gardenias and ficus trees. They ficus tease Benjamina. you. They put the nice buds out there and are, then they fall off. Are the cats of the plant world in pet terms? Oh, Meaning yeah. They just look at you and then you just go, no, no, no I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. You've done everything no. perfect, but I'm not going to do it. 
Come back and ask me tomorrow. I'm deciding. <laughs> Meanwhile, John is reading Carla's question. I was. She said that she needs to get grafted tomatoes in the ground. She says, I know you can't plant tomatoes in the same spot every year, but I plant these where I only had tomatoes for one year. I'm running out of room, and soil and pots are getting expensive. Well, the good news, Carla, is if they are grafted tomatoes, yeah. you can plant them in the same yeah. area year after year. Because of that old disease resistance thing? With yep. The, uh, yep. Yep. Yeah. The reason you don't want to plant tomatoes in the same spot is because of... Uh, sucks up all the nutrients? No, the no, 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 reasons, no, no, no. But... No, mainly because of fusarium uh, wilt. wilt and uh, verticillium wilt and fusarium blight. 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 Once they're in the soil, they're, they're there forever. And tomatoes that aren't resistant to those can become infected. Well, let the disease move around. Why should the tomato be inconvenienced? <laughs> <laughs> you know. But the the grafted root stock that you're using is resistant to all soil-borne diseases, so you don't have to worry. Oh, you know, speaking of that, on the citrus tree, uh -huh. there looks like a grafted line at the there, bottom of the stock. There is. It's, it's a, it is. There is, isn't there? Right. Because it's a different color. And then there's the line, and then the rest of the stock is green. It's very obvious. Yeah. Yeah, no, all I, all citrus are grafted. Right? I mean, is there any own root citrus no. out there? No. It's all yeah. grafted. Yeah. yeah, they're all grafted. But I looked at so. it and went, wow, that's obvious. Yeah. You know, to, to the untrained eye. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, who who was the – Carla? Sounds, sounds Carla. like Carla. an owl. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> who, 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 who was Car it? Was Carla? Carla. So, I mean, that's just it, right? Everybody says, oh, don't plant – tomatoes in the same spot and you know one reason is the diseases which you know, make perfect sense and then they say you like you said oh it's there forever but it, if you wait every uh if you give it a year it's less of a problem right you know it is still there but it's less of a problem if you wait a year if you if you do plant them every year it almost is building yeah. on the problem i misspoke when i said forever yeah it's what Did I meant was see? if you okay. plant in the same spot mark, every mark year, that. it'll be there. Mark that. John, <laughs> we're going to use that in a promo. But then people say also, like what Brian mentioned, and it's the nutrient thing, but that's an easy solution. Yeah, people don't understand because, that. Because because you, you, you can, can re recharge it with yes. you know, fertilizer. You can replenish and, it. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Well, roses are such heavy feeders that people used to say you can't plant. Uh, if you take out a rose, you can't put another one in, in the same hole. Sure you can. But, yeah, absolutely you can as long as you uh, add the nutrients back into the soil. And then and then as far as, like, it's not, you know, people think, like, oh, they have to, like, dig out a whole bunch of soil and put new in. I mean, if you read the back of a soil package and what it says that bag does cover for square footage, right? it's, it's almost like if you think about it, concentrated. And so, you know, for a pot, if you put in, you know, I don't know, maybe – six or eight cups of new potting soil that's almost like sprucing it all up again to the extent you don't need to refill the whole pot right, with new right, potting soil. right exactly yeah you know brian brian lives by that you know have you have to live by that. you you only put in so much potting soil and you keep them where the roots are always begging for more <laughs> <laughs> you you kind of tease your plants i'll tell you what it was great to have that soil uh what did i transplant a couple of weeks ago was it tomato i think it was a tomato all and with the heat man those tomato plants took off yeah. Are you growing any tomatoes? Yeah, I'm growing them. Are you? Yeah. Uh, my wife bought one. I, I and tell you why, what. I have no idea. Okay, maybe but... we can talk more about that after the break. All right. We have to take a break here. We have two more segments coming up here on Garden America. Stay with us back after these messages with our good friends from our good friends on BizTalk Radio. See, just like that on Facebook Live, that was a quick break, not even five seconds. How about that? <laughs> Those on Biz Talk Radio a bit longer, but we do welcome uh, your support. Thank you very much. John's wife, Shannon, bought a tomato plant, and to this day, John can't figure out why, Tiger. Well, <laughs> I think she's more of a visionary. Ah, oh, that's good. You know, she's, she's, she has a harvest in her head right now. Yeah. You yeah. know, looking at these now, where she's going to put them, I have no that's idea. A great, I've got a harvest in my head. Yeah. That's a great T-shirt or bumper sticker. What did she buy? I want to know the varieties. Oh, I have no, I didn't look at she it. She just oh. bought a tomato. Plant. I just I, I try not to have anything to do with it. <laughs> but but I did notice it's sitting on the front porch and there's a um Is it getting, getting I sun? know there's a tomato, there's a pepper, there's a zucchini 
and an Italian parsley. <laughs> and that's her project. You don't mess with it, right? No, I... I'm sure one day he'll have to go out there and plant them, yes. Yeah, I, I don't know. We really don't have anywhere to put a vegetable garden right now. But, what but, about the boxes down yeah. by the house? They need to have soil replenished. But, but down there, you also planted an area where it was in the ground, and things did really well, right? That needs to be weeded. Oh. <laughs> and you, you no know more beehive, There's, right? That, that should no, fail? No, the bee... The beehive keeper moved to Texas. Well, I, I liked it when I was up there. I liked going down there with those bees. I enjoyed that. Yeah, that was kind of fun. It was a lot of fun. Saw a snake cross the road. Now you're eating them. Times have changed. <laughs> Times have changed. When they were uh, weed, weed eating yesterday, they uh, a guy was the guy that was doing the weed eating. I saw him holding up. A, it was probably a. Five foot long snake. Oh, goodness. five foot. That's that's a pretty big snake. Yeah, right? it was pretty big. Yeah, because yeah, he was holding it up to the top of his head and it was almost touching the ground. Oh so, gosh. so he must have known the species not to. Well, be it was afraid. a gopher snake. Okay, so he made sure he relocated it. Nice. We love gopher snakes. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, if I could buy gopher snakes at Albertsons, just I them. would buy them by the dozen. We we, we should. I well, should try to get them, them in like ladybugs. It should be prey mantis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nematodes. Ladybugs and gopher and snakes. And gopher snakes. Go to a reptile <laughs> Do you have place. gopher snakes uh, in the canyon yes. behind you? Yeah, I've seen a few at our house. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're great. They're good. Yeah. I found gopher snakes, rattlesnakes, and king snake in our house. So the king and the gopher, like you're saying, spot on. You found on. a rattlesnake in your house? No, oh, uh, on, on, on the, property. the property. Yeah, you don't want your dog to get bit. Yeah. I relocated the rattlesnake. I didn't kill, I didn't kill any of them, but the rattlesnake i relocated but the other two i just left yeah because they're they're eating rodents and things yeah and, yeah, that, and they don't affect king snakes and gopher snakes don't you know they're not going to hurt your dog or your, right your kid for the most part so. when you relocated the rattlesnake it wasn't to uh a neighbor you were having trouble with <laughs> no, it was no. To, it there was, was no bedroom, bedroom in his house. Yeah, i was gonna say there was no bedroom <laughs> relocation yeah but um but yeah, yeah rattles, so, rattlesnakes will get gophers they, just as well as the others. Oh, yeah. They will. They're just a little bit more dangerous to have around your house. Sure. Right. Exactly. Sure. I wonder and if they would get a squirrel. Are they too big? I've never seen a rattlesnake with a squirrel on its belly. I have not, but I do have squirrels, too. Yeah. So maybe hope it would get a squirrel. Well, it's all about being able to, you know, unhinge that jaw. Yeah. Or like a baby squirrel they probably get. Yeah. You know, or baby rabbit. Carla's got another question for us. John, she's chiming in since nobody else has any, any questions or comments. So good for you, Carla. What's a good source for Protea Care? Protea Care? Yeah, her son good just source. gave her one, and she doesn't want to kill it. Oh, like where to look for information for good tips on growing Protea. If you want to check a book out of my library, I've got several books on <laughs> Protea. Yeah. And if you go to Amazon, you can check out Protea. But the best thing to do is just Google Protea Care. The number one thing to worry about is drainage yep. if you're putting it in the ground. The I would say the probably 95% of all Protea in the landscape that get killed are from overwatering. And up in Fallbrook, they have a few Protea farms. And, and right. they put them all on, on hillsides for that reason. Right, for the drainage. Yeah. The other thing that will kill uh, protea is phosphorus. Mm. So don't use a yeah. high bloom fertilizer. Yeah. And protea. Is, in is general, that... if you're if you're not sure, you can think that um, protea and also also Australian natives, most protea are native to South Af or yeah. Africa, but but, but uh, they they grow in soils where there's very little phosphorus. So the quickest way, one of the quickest ways to kill them is with high phosphorus fertilizers. Hey, so David don't do said that. he just watched a king snake eat a rattlesnake in his yard a couple of weeks ago. Nice. Oh yeah, That's a fun battle. Go, David. Yeah, king snakes will eat rattlesnakes. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that is interesting about the Australian natives. Is that they tell you do not use. You're right. saying, you know, um, the proteas, you know, different leucodendrons. What else is out there with the Australian native grevilleas? Um, and I know a lot of these are Africa, too, but they kind of go hand in hand. And a lot of people will be like, oh, I want that flower. And they've been taught all these years. Oh, if you want flowers, put on phosphorus. Right. 
and then they kill the plant real quick. I have my leucodendrons blooming right now, and I got it at Mission Hills Nursery. Ooh, nice. Why did you tell me to dump a bunch of phosphorus in my Australian bottle tree? <laughs> <laughs> That's doing good, right? It's, it's easy to grow. Standing. You just sit there and what? You feel like you want to give it a lot more care than it needs. Do not. Right. It's like, what? No, don't water. Fertil- no, no fertilizer. Yeah. Uh, hey, bud, leave me alone, because that's how they talk. They do? They do. Hey, get out of here. I don't need your water. It's a New Jersey, I don't need Australian your fertilizer. native. I don't need your fertilizer. <laughs> oh. But I like, uh, I like Protea, and I think I'm going to mix on the one side of my hill, I'm going to mix Australian natives with South African. With African natives. Yeah. No, oh, not just south. You're going to go full African? Well, Africa is a big continent. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So that's a lot of options. Yeah. You've got you've got rainforest. You've got deserts. You've got everything over there. Yeah. Well, there's there's rainforests in Australia, too. So mm-hmm. I'm not thinking so much the tropical parts of uh, Those Australia or Africa. You're thinking but of the more outback. the drier parts. Yeah, the outback. Yeah. <laughs> you mean like the steakhouse? The steakhouse. You know, you're going to get an Africa, awesome, awesome plant? There, there's a guy on YouTube. He's got a lot of subscribers and a lot of viewers, and he goes to these different uh, African tribes. Uh-huh. I mean, right in you know, Zimbabwe and Tanzania, and he brings all this American candy, Twizzlers, Twix, Snickers bars, uh-huh. and they've never, they've never tried these candies at all. Do they like for it? For the first time. Yeah. They, the, the, uh, the Twizzlers, though, and, and they got the captions below, they, they take a bite and why is this plastic? It's like plastic. It's like, oh, you know, good call. Yeah. But for the most part, their eyes light up, and they, they share. They're used to sharing everything, their resources. Uh-huh. So whenever he passes them out, they're always giving them to their friends and for kids. The kids love them. Every kid loves, you know, oh, I want more. Reese's peanut butter. And just to see their expression on their face because they've never had these before. See, but that's interesting because, you know, I've tried candy from other places. Don't necessarily like it sometimes. It's different right? because your palate's used to. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like I didn't know if they would like our candy because maybe it's too sweet or it tastes like plastic. The, the Reese's, <laughs> and, the Reese's, and the, the peanut butter. They said it was too salty. It tasted too salty. Really? Oh. Very few places in the world like peanut butter. Really? Yeah. That's not that a re- common no. food of choice. No, because uh, uh, goober peas, mm-hmm. which are peanuts are uh, uh, basically an American crop. Okay. So okay. in Europe, they use uh, Nutella. Right. Which is yeah. just And then Vegemite in to, Australia. Yeah, and Vegemite is horrible. <laughs> I, that's what I hear. I've yeah. never, let me ask you this. What about bread pudding? Is that in the same category? Oh, no. I, bread no, pudding bread is pudding. delicious. Yeah, what is it? Different. Bread pudding is a... Um, it's like a French toast. It's thing. like a dessert cake yeah. that's made out that has a bread base to it. Okay, uh, but it's uh, good. You've had it. Oh yeah. Can you get it here? Yeah. yeah. Where? Absolutely. <laughs> the store? <laughs> Garden Center Cafe makes great bread pudding, and they put a uh, whiskey sauce over it. Because I w- I watch a lot of these uh, you know these uh, food challenges on YouTube. People that are you know eating massive amounts of food. And uh, especially the English, it's part of the English breakfast, you know, with beans, eggs, hash browns, bread pudding. Mm-hmm. It's a standard staple yeah. for an English breakfast. And, <laughs> and whipped cream, if you put whipped cream on it, I mean, oh, yeah. anything well, tastes better with whipped cream. Now, you know, I, I, go, I go, you know what's right, I go, Cool Whip, baby. Ooh, Chemicals. Yuck. Come on. Oh, yuck. Oh, come on. Well, you know, back oh. to the cool Vegemite. Whip on on, on uh, pumpkin pie? Get out of here. Doesn't Vegemite sound like something that would be healthy? You know, <laughs> yeah. like veggies, Vegemite. Yeah. Let's get yeah. back to that. Exactly. And it's pure chemicals. Yeah. It's just, it's horrible. Yeah. They, they, good marketing, Vegemite. All right. Yeah. On that note, we're going to take a Vegemite break. <laughs> We've got one more segment coming up. Still time for your questions, your comments. What's on your mind here on Facebook Live? Going to take a break back after these messages, as we always say, on Biz Talk Radio. Stay with us.
We are back. It is our final segment. Boy, this show is flying right by. Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate your support. You can do us a favor. Tell your friends, your family, anybody else who doesn't know about us to uh, watch our show, listen to our show. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Garden America Radio Show, and help us to continue to grow to give you uh, more excellent content, as John likes to say. He's always said that, Tiger. Yeah. It's, it's all about I, content. I, he, every time we have our uh, corporate meetings, he mentions that. Carlo wants to know if HB 101 is okay for Protea. Yes. I would say it's good for what? – what isn't it good for? That's what we'd have, where we start. It's a terrible paint remover. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Yeah, that's yeah. true. But yeah, <laughs> but everything else, everything it's else, good. as far a, as plants, it's, it's a little boost. It's a vitamin. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's a, I know I'm really don't. We well, don't know what, what it, is. it is. That's the closest we can come up with. Well, right? but the, the one thing we know and the reason why you can say it's OK for Proteus is it's not a you know, it's not a nutrient. It's not an NPK. Right. You know, it's not a fertilizer like right. that. It's so that's why we can say it is safe for They're more like enzymes. Yeah. You know, you're not putting you're, on phosphorus. You're not putting on nitrogen. You're you're making the plant be able to absorb those better and easier because, like you say, like the enzymes and what they do with the roots. But you know, it's not something that's going to burn. Here's what here's what my don't, don't point that finger at me. <laughs> here's what my tagline would be for HB 101. HB 101, a prescription to good health. <laughs> a prescription to good health. Yeah, should have. Good health for your plants. I think that was the Marlboro tagline for years, too. <laughs> no, come to, where the, come to where the flavor is. Come to Marlboro country. Uh, Vincent and Hedges, it's not how long we make it. It's how we make it long. <laughs> <laughs> That's honest to goodness. That was one of their... Yeah, uh, really? Oh, man. Did you know there was a rose called Benson and Hedges? Really? No. Nope. Yep. No idea. Named after the tobacco company? Is it still around? I... Haven't thought of that for years. Um, I'm going to have to check and see. Or it was an old uh, knockout rose, and that's why they called it the Hedges one. No, 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 just Benson and Hedges. It had to be the tobacco company. Company Hedges, wanted yeah. wanted it. Yeah. Love bread pudding with whiskey or rum sauce. Yeah, see, like a custard base. Really? I better try it then. Yeah, I've been missing out all these years. Well, there's good bread pudding and bad bread pudding. Well, yeah. there you go. There's John. an English bar. Off of Washington Street called know, Shakespeare's. Yep, I know exactly. They where have that bread is. pudding there, and I think I would. I don't think I've. I don't think I've ever had it there, but it's an English restaurant, so and they do have a start. lot of authentic. You want English it to food. be thick too, like three inches thick. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you, but, it's like it's like uh, eating a cake, a breakfast okay. cake, or something. Except I, you know, it's light and fluffy. When, and when I'm watching these videos and they have it, I see, I see like a black round cookie or whatever it just i can't really tell a black cookie no it's round I'm, I'm talking about visually when i look at it on these plates it's round usually there's a couple on their plate that uh, are round mine's and, always been square well these are round john i've this never is, had round bread pudding <laughs> you, doesn't he just it irritate changes you the flavor <laughs> it never changes the flavor i don't think i could round. eat round bread pudding. <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it matters what shape it is we're talking about how it tastes Oh my goodness! What was the commercial for? No matter what shape your stomach's in, Alka Seltzer. Was it Alka Seltzer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was Alka Seltzer the one? I, I plop plop fizz fizz. <laughs> Are we going to talk? Oh, gardening? what relief it is! It's our okay. final segment. This is our fun segment. <laughs> well, we get back to gardening in a second. But I was asking my wife this the other day, and she didn't couldn't remember either. But there was a a commercial, and could have been Alka Seltzer, where there was a husband and wife in bed, and. I think the husband says something, it was the lemon. Or no, she says it was the lemon. And he goes, not the lemon. Do you remember that? I think it might have been alka -Seltzer. Was it alka -Seltzer? I think it might have been. Hey, Carla just said something, and I think she's right. I'm thinking of blood pudding. Blood pudding? I think she's right. Oh, blood oh, okay. pudding. Nobody's going to eat blood pudding. Yeah. I think she's what's, right. What's wrong Nobody with you? So. Yeah, Carla, yeah. thank you for that. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, that clears that up. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Very good. Yeah, then, I then had blood pudding when I was in England. Thank you, that was Carla. Good. Yeah. That's nasty. Even the yeah. thought of it is nasty. Ah, Lenore yeah. says it's good, though. Here we go, back yeah, and exactly. forth. You like to stir Lenore up the Facebook. Likes veggie no, pudding. Lenore says bread yeah. pudding. Oh, bread pudding, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Whoever blood likes pudding. blood pudding they likes like this segment. Too. They love this segment here. You get off the beaten track a little bit. Yeah. They like this segment. Um, Carolyn so, says we could go on the road with this. 
We are going to go back on the road with this show sometime soon, right? You know, yeah. my roses are uh, pretty much budding up. So if we want to schedule something up at my house, right. we can. All now, right. do you have good Wi-Fi? He's got to have a good Ethernet connection, doesn't yeah, he? We've, I think we, well, we've done it there before. Yeah. Where did the yeah, Wi-Fi come look, from? Look how things have changed, though, up there. I don't get Wi-Fi, to be honest with you guys. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know it. where it comes John, from. <laughs> Just... This is John. John, go, why? Right. Why? Why Why do we have Fi? Well, it's got Y in the very first part of the name. W-Y. Like, yeah. Why? <laughs> Not not W H Y. It's just in the air. I don't get it's it. It's just in the air. Yeah. Well, in the old days, did you have any idea how you could get a TV signal to leave, you know, a broadcast station, travel through the air into your antenna, and give you a picture? How the well, heck does that work? I know it went between two antennas, so I could picture it being shot from one <laughs> antenna to the other. Yeah. You saw all the pictures of the waves from one antenna the to the The little waves. Next. Right. Lenore wants to know if Epsom salts are good for plumerias. No. No. Next no. question. <laughs> Epsom salts are not good for anything relating to plants mm -hmm. that I can think of. Yeah. 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 They yeah, they say to apply it to soils for what are they? Magnesium. Magnesium. Epsom salts are magnesium sulfate. Right. But so it could acidify the soil a little bit, I think, but I think the the uh, valence of magnesium and sulfur are counterbalancing each other yeah. so i don't think it comes out as it's acidic. a wash. Yeah. yeah anyway it's a salt and adding salt to the soil is never good anytime you add salt to the soil you kill something that's alive right one minute to go one now minute, rose minute growers are going to say oh you always need to add epsom salts or sulpo mag you know if it works for you go ahead and do yeah. it yeah but like you said there's other ways you can do it too right Okay, guys, we got to wrap things up. 48 seconds remaining. Any last minute? Uh, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Absolutely. Thank you. It's Let the bunnies just come out tomorrow, even if they're eating your grass. And if it's a live bunny, don't bite off its ears. That's a real <laughs> mess. Hey, thank you for tuning in. Happy Easter to you. We'll do it again next week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, your blessed Easter weekend, and have a safe week. Remember, next week here, Pacific time, six minutes after eight, Eastern time zone, 1106, Garden America, newsletter, our YouTube channel, lots happening. Have a good week. Take care. This is and has been Garden America.